All right, good morning, everyone. You guys, it's good to be here. We've missed being together for the last couple weeks, and it's just, it's really good. This smoke, we still are going to just keep praying it goes away, though. We need it to blow out of here. But I feel like there's something that just happens in our hearts when we gather together and when we worship together. And so I'm grateful that you all are here today with us. Thank you. Um, I also just want to say thank you guys for just being with us in the last few weeks. We have been walking through a lot of stuff and um, our team has been hit hard by a lot of things. And so we're just so grateful for you guys. We have um, such an amazing family and we feel the love and the support you guys have been just pouring out upon us. And so thank you guys for that. And thanks for just continuing to pray for the rodents. They are feeling the prayers and the love. And you're gonna hear from Kate and Ryan this next week. Um, so be looking for that on, the, on social media. They're gonna um, put a video out for you guys just so you guys can hear how they're doing and where they're at. Uh, but they love you and they um, just are so thankful for you guys. And um, so this morning, you know, it's weird. I, I'm, I'm going to be teaching out of Acts 9, but the Lord, like he, I've been wrestling with this message for a while. I've, been, I've known that I'm going to do this message for about a month. And, you know, in the midst of everything that is going on in the world, everything that's going on in our valley and in our family and and it's just, it's crazy stuff. And I've been like, God, I, I can teach on Acts 9 and that's great, but what do you have for us in the midst of all that we're facing? And I just really felt like the Lord was leading me, you know, to share stuff out of this. You guys know I'm a storyteller. I love to tell, tell stories. It's like my favorite thing. I was made to be a story storyteller. And it, it's like, if you met my dad, you would understand that because he's a storyteller and I, I think I just got it from him. But as, as young as I was to all the way till now, I'm just like, give me a story to tell and I'm gonna tell it. So be ready, because you're gonna hear a lot of stories today. But this morning, you know, it's like, there's so much in this and we know this to be true. And yet this is crazy. Like if you didn't know this to be true and, that you, and you didn't know who God was, you would think some of these stories were not true. But today we're gonna go through some of these stories as well as the story of Saul in um, Acts 9. I'm gonna share some stuff with you. But I, I just really felt like the Lord was like, I just wanna encourage my church in letting them know who I am and that I can do anything. So I didn't talk to the worship team. They were singing songs this morning that I was like, well, of course you are. I didn't tell them anything that was going on in my message. And yet their words were saying stuff, their, the, the music that they picked, the songs that they picked, it all aligns with what the Lord is directing us to do this morning. So this morning, we're gonna hear some stories out of the word that I really believe is gonna encourage our heart. And I don't know about you guys, but every morning I keep waking up and just wondering if things have changed yet. Like, it's changed today, right? Like, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to hear something has happened. And, and I'm believing for that. And so the other day I woke up and I woke up to birds chirping outside my window. And I was like, well, I haven't heard birds in a while. So I immediately go to my phone to see what the air quality is. Because I can't see because my blinds were closed. And so I was like, it's, it's got to be good, you know? And it just gave me hope in that moment because I was like, birds are chirping, people. Right, And so we're just going to keep praying for that, praying for the fires to cease and the smoke to be out of our valley, because I think that's even just a ploy of the enemy just to get it to be heavier on us at this point, too. But um, I was excited because I really felt like, man, God, you are still moving in the midst of all that we are facing today. So the... Um, Recently, I'm going to tell you guys about a podcast I found. See, I've been traveling all over Oregon for the last month with family stuff. And so I have a lot of time in the car. I'm from Eastern Oregon. So La Grande, it's nine and a half hours away. So I was listening to a podcast. And then I was up at Mount Hood visiting my brother. And then I was in Central Oregon for a wedding. So I had a lot of time in the car for the last month. And so I've been listening to podcasts. And I came upon this podcast called Human Hope. And you may have heard about it. But I was like, human hope, I need some hope. 
that sounds like a good one. And so I just started listening to this and Carlos Whitaker, apparently he's very well known. I didn't know this. I told Ryan and Andy about it and they were like, yeah, we know this guy. And I was like, well, I didn't know it. Like, apparently he's very popular, but, and he's been around for a while, but Carlos, he is the um, person on this podcast and his whole goal for this podcast is to release hope to people. His whole goal is to share the hope that we have in Christ with people. And it's incredible some of the stories that he's been doing. He's only done 25, I think, podcasts so far on this, on this podcast. But um, I was listening and I felt like I needed to share with you guys just this story that I heard on this Human Hope podcast because I felt like it would just give us some hope in the midst of all that we're facing today. And I would encourage you to go check out this podcast because seriously, this morning he posted something on his Instagram that just wrecked me. I was talking to Andrew about it because I had listened to his last week's podcast and then God just did something crazy big this morning. He found out about it. So I just, it's super encouraging. But okay, so about a month and a half ago, he was in the Atlanta airport and he was just, he's a speaker, so he flies all over. So he's in the Atlanta airport and he feels Holy Spirit nudge him. And he's like, okay, what are we doing here? And he's paying attention to what Holy Spirit's telling him to do. And so he's a Delta Skies member, so he could go up into the lounge and he could enjoy the quiet and all the things that come with being a member. But he felt the Holy Spirit say, I want you to go get Chick-fil-A. And he's like, well, that sounds good. And I know that sounds weird that God would lead him to go get Chick-fil-A, but he went to go get Chick-fil-A. And as he's in line, he hears this piano playing and he's like, this is so beautiful. And he's thinking it's on, you know, the overhead, like they're hearing it from the speakers. And he turns and he looks and there's this guy on a grand piano. And he's like, that guy is playing this beautiful music. Are you serious? This is so good. So he decides that he's gonna eat his Chick-fil-A at this, um, at Chick, you know, right there and listen to this guy. And so a little bit later he goes up to him and he starts talking to this guy and sees that he has like $13 in his tip jar. And you know, the, he's like, how long have you been here? And the guy's like, oh, I've been playing a few hours. And Carlos was like, dang man, he has $13 in his tip jar. And so he said, what's the largest tip you've ever been given? And the guy was like, $600. Somebody gave me $600 one time. And he's like, that's amazing. And so he goes back and I'm sure you know where this story is going. But so Carlos is very well known. He has an Instagram following of like 500,000 people. He calls it his Insta Familia. And so he puts this video up of this guy playing and he's like, all right, Insta Familia, I'm feeling it on my heart. Let's tip this guy. Here's my Venmo. Anything you want to give, I'm going to give it to this guy directly to him. So within an hour, he had $10,000 in his Venmo. Within an hour. Nobody knows this guy. So then Carlos is like, I gotta go catch my plane, but I gotta tell this guy who this is and I gotta get his contact info. So he sits with him for a second and he tells this guy, hey man, I just got you $10,000 in tips. All my family on, on Instagram is watching this. And he's like, who? Who are these people? And he's like, this is crazy, right? So he gets his contact info, he gets home to Nashville, and he gets a hold of this guy because at that point he had $55,000 in his Venmo. This is crazy. So he gets on this Zoom call and he does one of his podcasts. You, go, you should go listen to it, it's so awesome. But so he, he's telling this guy, by the way, I have so much more money for you. And this guy is just crying and his wife gets on this podcast with him and, and they're talking about just how God is, is blessing them so much. They know Jesus and they have been walking through some stuff, you know, and it just, it blew him away. And by the end of all of this Venmo stuff, he is at 70, it's over $70,000. Carlos had to like cut it off. And I just thought, man, in the midst of all that we're facing, how cool is that, that that's the story? that this guy is writing. He's following the lead of Holy Spirit. And he was very clear about that. He has 500,000 followers and we're not even sure that all of them love Jesus, right? But they're hearing that Holy Spirit led him to do this because God saw this man and wanted to bless him. And it's so cool. They just, um, they actually just raised a, ha- a quarter of a million dollars for a bunch of 4-H kids down in California that just lost all their farms uh, in the, the Dixie fire. 
And so they were able to raise money for them too just this last couple weeks. So it's incredible. I would say go check that out. If you need some hope, I promise you, you're going to get some hope from that podcast. But Holy Spirit is looking for those that are willing to say yes. And Carlos says yes every day. And we get to say yes to Holy Spirit every day too and his leading. And I promise you as you do that lives are going to, they're going to change you guys. It's crazy. God wants to move even in the midst of what we're seeing today. And he is moving. It's, and it's, it's cool too, because, you know, I, I may not know what you need, but I know God and he knows what you need. And so as I'm being, saying yes to him, he's going to lead me in doing something for you that no one maybe even knew you needed. And I've been a recept, or, uh, I've received from you guys on that. And I just know that God has, he, he just knows us. He knows what we need and he loves us so much. So today we're gonna go into Acts 9, like I said, and next week I'm gonna finish this series up or this uh, chapter up. But today I'm gonna talk just about the very beginning of this. And then next week I'm gonna go a little bit deeper into Acts 9, because I really feel like the Lord has put something else on my heart to add to this. So if you guys wanna turn to Acts 9, um, you can do that. We have been in Acts now for um, a, few, a while, a few months, I think. Um, and we're only in chapter nine. So like Ryan said, when we started this, we'll be going through this probably through the end of next year. Um, but Acts is so incredible. And we just know that God has directed us to this uh, book for this time. And so um, if you haven't got caught up, just find us on the website or on our YouTube page and, and get ca caught up on this uh, series because I really think that there's something incredible for us in this. So a few weeks ago, Ryan taught on chapter seven and it was about Stephen. And Stephen was a guy that was, um, he loved Jesus and he was brought before the Sanhedrin and he was accused of teaching about Jesus. And when he got the mic, he started telling these guys who were accusing him to not preach Jesus and telling him that he needed to be quiet. They, he was like, you're the ones that killed him. And so then they get real mad. And Ryan taught all about this, so go back and listen, but they get real mad and so they stone him. And they're just like, we have got to shut this down because we don't want anybody to know that we were in charge of killing this guy. We don't want this to go everywhere everywhere. So I'm getting so excited that I'm like gulping. Sorry. I just, I get so excited about what I'm teaching. So then last week, Drew preached on chapter eight. And um, I just want to read the first few verses of chapter eight, because it's going into where we're at today. So it said, and Saul approved the killing of him. So that means Stephen. Saul was in charge of killing Stephen. He approved it. He was glad that Stephen was dead. And it says, on that day, the great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem. And all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Godly men buried Stephen and mourned deeply for him. But Saul began to destroy the church. Going from house to house, he dragged off both men and women and put them in prison. So Saul hates Christians. And he is doing everything he can to stop the spreading of the gospel throughout the world. And so we're going to pick up in um, Acts 9, 1 right now. And it says, Meanwhile, Saul, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As they neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. So Saul, he's a Jewish leader, and he believed that Jesus is a false Messiah. And he despised Christ, and he would get permission to go from city to city to have Christians arrested. And then his vote would be that they would all die, that they would be killed. And what we've read in, in Acts up to this point is that the gospel is being spread everywhere. And every time you read about how one of the disciples is sharing about Jesus, thousands of people are coming to know him. So this is growing and growing. And Saul's like, I have got to shut this down. So he's walking on this road to Damascus and in the middle, he's in the middle of a mission to deliver letters from the chief priests in Jerusalem. 
And in the letters was commanded to the priests in Damascus to arrest anyone who's a follower of the way. So that's a follower of Jesus. And so now we get to this chapter where, or to the verse where it talks about what happens because see, he, the light shines down on the ground or on him. And it says in verse four, he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but didn't see anyone. Saul got up from the ground and when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand to Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. So I think it's interesting that Saul knew exactly who he was talking to. He knew exactly the God that he was encountering in that moment. And he, you know, Jesus gives him instructions immediately to go and do something. And as he gets up, he's blind. Can you imagine what that must have felt like? This is a very powerful man. This guy is doing a lot of destruction. And now he has to be led by his servants back to where Jesus is telling him to go. So he is losing power. And I bet in that moment, he's realizing, oh man, this is the real God and I'm wrong here. Right? What was happening in this encounter? We don't exactly know what God was talking to him about. We don't exactly know what was happening in him. But what we do know is something changed in his life. And we're going to dig deep, deeper into that next week. But it says this on, in verse 10. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. And the Lord called him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. And the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Taurus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said, Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to all the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Can you imagine being Ananias? <laughs> That's a little scary. But he went to the house and he entered it and placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again and he got up and was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. So now we have this guy who, Ananias, who is filled with the Holy Spirit. He knows the voice of the Lord and he's hearing some instruction from the Lord that I think would be scary to any of us. See, Saul's a terrorist. He's persecuting people. Can you imagine what that must have felt like for Ananias when he's like, am I hearing you right? This is my life that we're talking about, Jesus. Like, are you sure that this is the direction that you want me to go? But because he fully trusts God, he goes and God says, go because this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. See, no one is disqualified or too far away or a lost cause for Jesus to transform, for him to turn their lives around. No one is too far away from that. Ananias moves out in obedience, completely trusting the Lord and he as he gets to Saul, <laughs> I can imagine he was probably trembling. But as he gets to Saul, he puts his hands on Saul's and all of a sudden something like scales falls from his eyes. This is a huge miracle, you guys. And the first thing that Saul does is he gets baptized. Baptized, baptism is being a, um, it's a sign of leaving the old behind and living a new life. And Saul was leaving behind 
all this that he has known, all this that he had been doing, he was coming out a brand new man. Side note, we are doing baptisms next week. And so if you have not been baptized, we are doing baptisms. So um, this is a miracle and this is huge. And this should bring us hope today, especially for all that we're hearing about that's going on in the world. You know, there is so much happening right now, especially in Afghanistan. And I'm saying, man, God, do it again. Show up again. I don't know what that looks like, but we are gonna trust you to move again. If God could do that in Saul's life, he can do it again today in the ways that we least expect it. So like I said, I'm gonna dive deeper into Acts 9 next week, but um, I really wanna get into a few other things. I felt like what the Lord said was, one, this is a huge story. There's a terrorist that then went on to preach Jesus, right? There's a guy that was persecuting and killing Christians and now he's joining them. And he is telling everybody about this Jesus that he knows personally. And so and I was hearing the Lord and he was just like, Kim, I want my people to know that I can do anything. That you have no idea what I'm already doing right now. And he wants to partner with us. He wants to give us hope. Because you guys, I don't know about you, but it is heavy right now. There's a lot of stuff that is going on that I'm like, God, what the heck do we do? What do we do? And here's what we do is we turn our eyes to him and we follow his lead and we go out as he's directing. We do what he's telling us to do. So this morning, I felt like I was supposed to share some stories that I think are crazy. Like I said, we know the word of God is true. And sometimes we read these stories and we're like, yeah, yeah, I've known that story my whole life because I was taught it in Sunday school. But I want us to really realize what happened in these people's lives. The first story is out of Exodus and it's when Moses is leading the Israelites out of Egypt. See, God's people, they're in Egypt, they're in slavery. And God's like, I am gonna set my people free and I'm drawing them into the promised land, Moses go. So Moses goes, they all, you know, you guys know the story, they get out of Egypt and they get to this place where they have the Red Sea on one side and they have the Egyptians on the other. I don't know about you guys, but there's a lot of times where I'm feeling like I have no way out. God, I can't see, there's a sea here and I can't get through it. And my enemy's attacking me this way and I don't know what to do. See, that's how the million Israelites are feeling. They're like, why did you bring us out here? What, to die? And God's like, no, let me show up for you, right? So it says in Exodus 14, 10, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was, this, was it because there are no graves in Egypt that you brought us out into the desert to die? What have you done to bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. See, that's where people are right now in the world. They're not sure what to do. And they're just like, just leave me alone. But it says in verse 13, Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. Nothing, not even the Red Sea was gonna stop God from moving his people into the promised land and what he had said for them. Nothing was gonna stop God. So I don't know if you guys have ever seen a sea separate. I haven't, right? But that is crazy. A million people walked on dry land as there's two things of the sea on both sides. See, that's how good of a God that we serve. No one would even have expected him to do that, but he knew exactly what he was doing. See, I don't know what's going on in the world and what God you're gonna do, but what I do know is that you can do anything. And I'm gonna trust you and I'm gonna keep my eyes on you and I'm gonna pay attention to what you're doing. I don't know what is going on in your situation and what you're facing. And I don't know what God is doing in our state and in our valley and in our nation and in our world. 
But I do know that he's good and that he's moving and that we get to keep our eyes on him and our hearts in line with him. The next thing, I'm not gonna actually read the scripture just because of time's sake, but um, if you guys ever wanna read a crazy story in Numbers 22, um, it's, a cra- I mean, <laughs> it's a crazy story. It's a story of a donkey talking to a dude. Right, God actually talks to somebody through a donkey. Balaam is stubborn. He's not listening to what God's saying. He's doing his own thing. He's on this path and his donkey sees an angel. And so his donkey's trying to get him to not go that way. And after the third time, he's super frustrated and the donkey just sits down and he's just ticked off. And Balaam is on this donkey and doesn't see the angel. He's not paying attention. He's very unaware of what's going on. He just wants to get to the destination he wants to get to. And what God does is he takes over a voice of the donkey and starts talking to to Balaam. It's the craziest story. And yet I'm like, you can do what? You can talk through an animal? Are you kidding me right now? But here's the thing. God will do anything to get our attention and to speak to us. Nothing is impossible. He might not talk to you through an animal. That would be a little weird but he will do anything that he can to talk to you. He wants to give you clear direction. He wants you to pay attention to what he's doing. He has instruction for you and he wants to lead your life, but it takes us saying, okay, I'm in. I'm gonna pay attention to what you're saying, God. And no, you don't have to send a donkey because that would freak me out a little bit, right? But what is he doing to talk to you right now? How is he trying to get your attention and are you paying attention to him? Nothing, absolutely nothing is gonna stop God from leading us and giving us direction, even when we may be stubborn or not listening. The last story is in 2 Kings 6. And um, the king of Aram is at war with Israel. And so he comes up with this plan and he, he's telling his people, this is what we're gonna do. And at the same time that he's coming up with a plan, Elisha, the prophet, is hearing from God and God's giving him that plan so that the Israelites can be ready so that they are not overtaken. And it keeps happening. And this king is getting really ticked off at this point. And he's like, who is spreading this to the Israelites? Who's letting them know? And some wise guy is like, no one. It's God. It's Elisha. God is talking to Elisha. And honestly, we can't do anything about it. God's gonna tell him even what you're doing in your room at night, I promise you. So, hey, I don't know what to do here. Any instruction that you give us, God's always gonna give to Elisha. So this king, he's like, okay, we gotta overtake Elisha at this point. So he finds out where he's at and they, they get to the city at night. And it says this in uh, 2 Kings six fourteen. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army of horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked up and saw the hills full of horses and chariots and fire all around Elisha. See, this servant, he is looking through human eyes, just like we're looking at what's going on around us through human eyes. He's looking and he's like, oh my goodness, we are being overtaken. Elisha, they got you. Like, there's no way we're getting out of this one. And Elisha knows different because he's got the eyes of the Lord and he's paying attention to what God's doing. And so he says, hey, God, open this guy's eyes, my servant's eyes, so he can see what you're doing. And as he does, in the mountains, in the hills, is a whole army there for them. See, the Lord wants to show us what he's doing. He wants to show us what he's up to and to open our eyes to the greater things that are happening and taking place. And the enemy, he's doing all he can to keep us focused here, right here. Like he wants us to feel overwhelmed. He wants us to fear, feel, fear him and what he's doing. And all I'm saying is I believe that God wants to give us hope in the midst of what we're facing. I believe that God wants to, us to know that if he's done it before, he can do it again, that he can do anything Nothing is gonna stop him from moving. 
on our behalf. And I believe that we get to partner with him every single day to see a move of God take place in and around our lives. This past week, Andy posted a video on social media and he encouraged us to change the headlines of what we're seeing. And Nisha talked about it a little bit this morning too, meaning that we're seeing a lot of headlines right now that are, they're just, it's dark. And it's not that it's not true and we're not saying don't be aware of what's happening. You know, don't be naive to the stuff that is going on. But I really believe that, that this is heavy and that the enemy is really trying to get us to focus on the heaviness of it. And so Andy said, how about we change the headlines? How about we actually post different things that are changing the headlines that we're seeing to bring hope? So starting with headlines like, man sees neighbor walking out of house and goes over to check on them to see if they need anything. That's a good headline. Or mom gets together with other moms and puts gifts together for teachers in the kids' school to bless them as they're facing really hard days. Or what about family sits down for dinner together and is honest about what they're feeling and what they're going through and they have a family prayer time. See, we get to be the ones that change the headlines and to release hope into this world that feels hopeless at this moment. I don't know what headline you're gonna post but I believe that God wants to partner with you. And I believe that he wants to lead you. And I believe that there are good headlines coming out of your life and out of your family's life as you trust him, as you follow his lead. And again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't be aware of what's going on, but I believe that God wants to distribute hope out of all of us. And the only way that we're gonna receive hope in this moment is to have our eyes focused on him and our, our, our ears tuned into what he's saying and to see what he's up to, not through human eyes, but through spiritual eyes. And listen, I don't expect us to be super hopeful people every day. You know, the last couple of weeks have been really hard and Andy and I, it's like, it's, Every other day, it's, it's Andy's going through a hard time and then I'm going through a hard time. And we get to support each other. We get to be there and encourage each other in those days. Like that's what we get to do as a family, right? Not every day are you gonna be super excited and hopeful and, and joyful about what's going on. But I would say if you are, go find those that aren't right now and encourage them. Be with them, hold up their arms. We get to surround and support each other and remember that even in the midst of all that is happening, we are following a God who encountered a terrorist on the road and changed the whole trajectory of his life. And we're following a God that parts the Red Sea in order to get his people safe and living in the promised land that he has for them. And we're following a God that speaks through a donkey just to get our attention. And we're following a God that opens up our eyes to see what's really going on and shows us where he is in the midst of the battle that we're facing. And I just wanna ch uh, challenge us to partner with him in these days, to be people that are releasing hope. There is so much happening and I know it can be discouraging, but I know that we serve a God that can do anything. Would you guys stand with me? And just close your eyes for a second. And I just want you to be honest with your heart. Of where are you? Just even ask your heart, like where, where am I today? Am I hopeful? Am I discouraged? Am I fearful? What's going on with me? Just have a conversation with your heart for a second. Holy Spirit, just talk to us. Jesus, we're, we're facing a lot of things these days. And a lot of times it can feel heavy and we can be confused. We cannot understand what's happening around us. We can feel hopeless. We can feel helpless. But God, what we know is that we know you and we know that you can do anything. You just showed us. 
And I just ask God that as we are walking through this week, that what comes out of our mouths would be different than what's been coming out of our mouth. That we would be people that are releasing hope where it seems hard and those that don't know you are feeling hopeless. God, I pray for divine encounters with people that are needing to feel hope right now. I pray that you would do something in this valley that radically shifts us from being a hopeless valley to a hopeful valley. We may not see the whole COVID numbers changing or the smoke being gone or whatever, but God, what we know is that you are good and that we get to release your hope into this valley. So I just pray, God, that you would just move on our hearts. Anywhere that we're discouraged, I just ask that you would go and meet with us in those places. Tell us your truth. Right now we're hearing so much that we don't even know what is true anymore, but you only speak truth. So open our ears to hear what you have to say. Let us only be led by you. And God, I pray that our lives would be those headlines of hope this week in all that we do and all that we say, that people would see that you are moving in the midst of all that's happening right now. God, we love you and we just stand in the line with you. Direct our steps, God, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. All right, have a good day, you guys. Thanks for being here. Keep posted on social media and our website and stuff for what's going on.